Interest on student loans will begin accruing again starting today. It comes after a three-year pandemic pause and ahead of a full restart of loan payments next month. While student loan payments will restart October 1st, exact payment dates will depend on the lender. Borrowers should begin receiving their bills in the days ahead. Idalia bringing damaging tornadoes, severe flooding, and powerful winds from Florida to the Carolinas. As the recovery process continues, President Biden is vowing federal resources to the area's hardest hit, with plans to survey the damage tomorrow. Several deaths have been reported, but the devastation was not as extensive as it could have been. The White House is calling on Congress to pass a temporary spending bill, which would avoid a potential government shutdown, but there are a few obstacles in the way. The current fiscal year comes to an end later this month. Disagreements between congressional officials are keeping the threat of a potential shutdown alive. The Senate returns from summer break next week, and the House comes back September 12th. Donald Trump's election interference case in Georgia will be televised. All court proceedings will be broadcast live on the Fulton County Court YouTube channel, and a poll camera will be assigned for TV and still photography. Yesterday, Trump's defense team pleaded not guilty on his behalf in the case. He entered the formal plea through court filings instead of being arraigned in person. Consumers are powering the economy. New government figures show household spending rose 0.8% in July, the fastest rate since January. Inflation ran up 2.1% the three months through July. That's close to the Federal Reserve's 2% target. And let's say it all keeps the Federal Reserve on track to hold interest rates steady this month. Wall Street is also optimistic about a possible pause in interest rate hikes following an expected 3.3% rise in personal consumption expenditures. That index is considered the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. Stocks ended mixed yesterday, but the Nasdaq reached its highest level in more than four weeks. The CME Group's FedWatch tool shows traders remain 88.5% confident the Fed will leave rates alone this month. A little bit of relief for prospective home buyers. Mortgage rates in the U.S. dropped a little this week. The 30-year fixed rate mortgage averaged 7.18% the week ending August 31st. That's down from 7.23% the week before. It ends a five-week stretch of increases, but leaves rates stubbornly above 7% amid lingering inflation. A plan is in the works to help auto companies adapt U.S. factories for electric and hybrid vehicle production. The Energy Department says it will provide up to $12 billion for funding jobs in car-making communities. The program will favor projects likely to retain collective bargaining agreements and pay higher wages. There are hundreds of new laws going into effect today in Texas. Some of them relate to school safety, crime, gender, voting, and guns. To learn more about each of these laws, just head to ksat.com. We have a detailed article that breaks down what each of them mean and how they will affect you. And that's today's 9 at 9.